I guess it's your mom. In case you hadn't guessed, I'm sick. Luckily, it's not the flu. <laughs> um, we actually managed, I actually managed to get my flu shot this year. Um, my eldest, on the other hand, did not get their flu shot, and they ended up with a couple of infections along with it. So we ended up at the ER with a, with a high fever and uh, upper respiratory, lower respiratory infection. Not fun, not fun at all. They missed school, so. Uh, luckily though, my uh, my youngest happily shared his cold with me. He wasn't that generous. I just don't like being sick at all. <laughs> so anyways, I know, I know you're saying, but mom, if you're sick, you should be taking care of yourself. You know, not being on the computer, not making videos. You should be resting. I know. But I figured this was the perfect time to share with you what you should do in the case of being sick. And um, the first thing that I'm going to tell you and I, I, is that I don't know everything about being sick. So I have a reference. And it's, it's this book. It's called uh, Where's Mom Now That You Need Her. It was published in 1983 by uh, Betty Ray Franson, Catherine J. Franson, and Kent P. Franson. Um, it's definitely a good read. I highly recommend it. Pretty sure that they've got an up updated copy, and if they do, you should definitely buy it. Hold on. This is why I have a snot rag. All right, so... Um, right. My... Excuse me. My eldest suggests that I need to show you this. I mean, youngest. Mm -hmm. Right, you know, in case you end up with a case of stripes. Oh, where it's a good book to read when you're sick. That's right. All right, so, uh, if you're sick, number one thing you need to do is listen to your body, okay? Uh, if you don't feel like eating anything, try to eat. Try, try to eat little light things, you know, uh, like uh, keep it to like uh, clear fluids, plenty of rest. You definitely get, need to get lots of rest. Clear fluids like this, this is a sugar-free juice, you know. Mmm, grapey. Uh, or water. Some water here. Lots of ice in this. So, you can see. Water's good for you. And uh, you can also drink um, tea, um, herbal tea, I recommend. Uh, chamomile is good with honey and lemon. Um, that actually helps to soothe your, your throat if you have a sore throat from being sick. Um, you can also set up a, um, a humidifier near you that will help to moisten your bronchial tubes, make it easier to cough and bring up any of the phlegm that's going down there that you don't want down there. Uh, now, um, that's just a cold. I, I, I know it's typical to go, well, it's just a cold. I'll write it out, which means you're going to go to work. Don't do that. Um, I'm more, I'm more interested in making sure that your health is is good than if you're making tons of money um seriously if if you're if your health isn't good how are you going to study if your health isn't good how are you going to work you're not going to be able to give 100 percent. you're not going to be able to pay attention your 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 body is going to be going oh i'm sick i should be at home lying down but you're not there you're at school or at work so you know if you're not feeling well you should be at home you should be resting. You should be drinking your clear fluids. Uh, you should be drinking them often enough to where when you need to urinate, it comes out pretty clear. You know, not not yellowish, but more more white or clear, you know. Uh, now, there is one thing that I, that I don't know everything about, and so uh, that's what I brought this book for. 
and it's fever. So I'm going to read the entry about fever. There's a lot of good reference. There's a lot of good recipes in here um, that you can do. Um, there's a uh, there's a thing about vitamins. There's a thing about uh, what to look for when you're choosing quality food, like. Uh, if you're getting apples, look for a rich, deep, uniform color. Avoid bruised, soft, or blemished fruit. Store them at room temperature for one to three weeks. If cut, sprinkle them with lemon juice. And store covered in the refrigerator. That's pretty good. You, there's a recipe here for poached eggs. Um, the great thing about this, though, is that um, you're not going to find anything with exotic ingredients or anything like that. Uh, you need nothing more than a saucepan, a frying pan, a casserole dish, and a sharp knife. That's on the back. To create anything that you'll find here. But that's not all. That's like I said, you'll, it tells you how to, how to get the, how to get the ingredients. It, it also tells you what to do if you are sick. And there's lots of places to write your own mother's old standbys in there. So you can go back and go, oh, well, I can do this, you know. Ooh, here's a, there's a thing in here about how to handle stains. That's useful. But we wanted to talk about fever, right? So, most often, fever is the body's response to infection. But there can be other causes of an elevated temperature, too. Uh, bear in mind, this book was published in 1983, so some of the stuff that I'm going to read here may be inaccurate. So, uh, if you're not sure, check the internet. Or ask your doctor. Uh, certain medications, including antibiotics, your, your doctor will tell you, can cause fever, as can chronic disease like cancer, uh, vigorous exercise, or heat stroke. Uh, although I've noticed myself, in myself, generally speaking, if you have a fever, uh, you'll feel cold. Whereas um, if you have, uh, if you have heat stroke, you'll feel hot, like way hot. And uh, so far as I've ever noticed, when I have a fever, I don't sweat. But what it says here is the main danger from fever is dehydration because the body literally dries out as it perspires in an attempt to lower the temperature. Um, and like I said, I don't know if you've noticed that in you, but in me, generally speaking, when I have a fever, I don't sweat. But you should definitely still drink a lot of water. So now, uh, when high fevers occur, such as those above, 105 degrees, convulsions may result. And the reason for this is because your nerves liquefy at that temperature. So it's like your brain, your brain has decided, okay, I'm not going to stay alive. I'm not going to stay alive anymore. And it melts. And so that's when, that's when you start having convulsions, which is why 105 is so dangerous. You cannot correctly die. This is important here. Pay attention. You cannot correctly diagnose a fever by feeling your forehead. Okay, you, nobody is going to be able to correctly diagnose a fever by feeling your head. Use a thermometer. And by the way, use a fever thermometer. Don't try to diagnose a... I did this once, that's why I'm saying it. Don't, don't try to diagnose a fever with a candy thermometer. It won't work. Use a fever thermometer. You can buy one of those cheapoid ones with the mercury in it, or you can get a digital one. The cheapoid ones, what you do is you shake it until it gets, the mercury gets down below 94 degrees, and then you pop it in your mouth for five minutes. The digital ones, you don't have to do that. Um, do Okay, so when you're taking your temperature, whether it's a digital or a mercury one, don't breathe through your mouth while you're taking your temperature. So if your nose is blocked, then you, you're going to have to hold your, hold your uh, nose for a while. You're going to have to hold your breath for a while. And don't attempt to get a reading within a half an hour after you have consumed hot or cold foods or liquids. The reason for that is because it will mess up the temperature in your mouth. Um, so, you know, to kind of make it easier on yourself, uh, just don't take your temperature, uh, outside of half an hour after eating anything or drinking anything. Okay. Now treatment. Now I'm, I'm going to read this backwards because they say something at the end of the treatments that I think is important to read. Uh, many doctors recommend letting a fever run its course unless it is extremely high or unless it carries with it extreme discomfort. 
you should generally let a fever run its course for 24 hours before beginning treatment. So 24 hours, you note know, down the time, and then um, uh, every few hours, check your temperature to make sure that it's not above, it's not at or above or approaching 105. So um, treatment, take aspirin or non-aspirin medication designed, this is after 24 hours. So after 24 hours, you're going to take an aspirin or non-aspirin medication designed to reduce fever. You're going to take the medication every three to four hours until the fever has been gone for 24 hours. Right before you take your medicine, you're going to take your temperature so that you can make sure that that temperature is going down. Okay. Uh, you're going to bathe in a t tub full of lukewarm water. Lukewarm, not cold not hot. If it's cold, you could have a stroke. If it's hot, then you could you, you could end up having convulsions because like I said, your brain is delicate. Okay? If it gets too hot, that your nerves are going to melt. If it's too cold, then your blood vessels are going to have problems. Number 3, get plenty of rest. This is why I say if you're sick, you should be at home. You should not be on a bus, you should not be at school or at work, you should be at home because you don't know if you're going to start running a fever. And who knows, right? So definitely get plenty of rest. Your body will usually tell you if you need to rest. So if you feel like you need to rest, then rest. And then eat nutritious light foods to keep up your strength. We're talking things like our liquid and also chicken broth or beef broth. Uh, chicken soup is nice, um, fruits and vegetables, nothing that's going to give you that heavy, uh, I've just finished eating a big Thanksgiving dinner feeling. Um, so then, um, seek medical help when the fever reaches 105 degrees, regardless of whether or not it's been 24 hours. Okay. If it has not been 24 hours and the fever gets that high, get someone Seek medical help. And by the way, when we say seek medical help, I don't mean drive yourself to the to the um, drive yourself to ER. What I'm saying is get someone to take you to ER. Um, if you have a friend that, that has a car that can take you, uh, or if your mom is available or your dad is available, someone that you trust, get them to take you to urgent care or ER. Uh, if you, if you don't have anyone that can take you, then fine, call, call, call the ambulance, but for pity's sakes, don't drive yourself. Okay. If your fever persists for 24 hours after you've started treatment. So if, if it's been 24 hours after you started, after you started treatment and you still have a fever, get someone to take you to ER or to urgent care. If the fever is accompanied by other troublesome symptoms like nausea or vomiting, then seek, um, seek, seek medical attention. And then um, if your condition worsens instead of improving after you've been treating it for 24 hours. So it's 24 hours after you started uh, treating it and it's gotten worse instead of better, definitely see a doctor. And then finally, if you feel extremely ill, if you cannot stay awake, or if you feel confused and disoriented, and this is before you hit the 24 hours, um, within the 24 hours of you need to treat it, and you know before the 24 hours of you need to treat it, and, and that if you if it if you feel extremely ill, meaning you feel nauseated, if you can't stay awake. If you feel confused and disoriented, so you're not sure what you should be saying or doing, and if you're not sure where you are, definitely, definitely seek medical attention. And that's, you know, call a friend, call your mom, call 911 if you, for, for lack of anything else, if you can't get a hold of anyone else. Uh, I'm running out of time, and I should really go and take care of myself. So, uh, remember that I love you. Please take care of yourself. Get your flu shots. Um, buy this book. And I'll talk to you again soon. I love you.